work ethic at 41 and problem solving at 20. And, ooh, and know how to settle conflict with peers and adults at 51. Are other people seeing that on that spreadsheet? Yeah, we're like everything was shifted. I think you, uh, I think you solved that one there. So I think on that list, we need to get rid of the housing and meal preparation because that one scored. And same with uh, financial literacy. Is that was that one on the list already? It looks like the three. If we're doing the three, it should be problem solving skills, work ethic, and know how to settle conflicts with peers and adults. Those are the top three. If Anne's got this shift right, which I think she has. Yeah. yeah. Right. So do we have it? Do I have it correct now? So if you're only after the top three, Winton, everything from argue respectfully to written language doesn't need to be in that list. It's problem solving skills, work ethic, and the settling conflicts. Those are the top three. Well, so you're saying the, these were higher scores? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm saying the lowest three scores are just problem solving skills, work ethic, and how to settle conflicts. So then getting rid of these. If we're going by the top three, then yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And uh, feel free, I, I, I'm happy to have other team members, if I'm not keeping up here, jump right in. All right, everything else look okay? All right, let's go to the next. Uh, what should the middle school do to ensure students feel physically, emotionally, and intellectually safe? I think this was more than three. Um, I think folks added some things, so take a look at uh, what's here. Talking about mental health needs, uh, helping students understand what har harassment really means, ensure a safe space for learning and debate of ideas, clear reporting system for student safety complaints. I think probably I've got this large enough so you can see uh, routines and class expectations. Uh, strong collaboration and connection with adults. Collaborate. Well, actually, this, this probably duplicates. Which which one's better here? Of these two, which would you choose? Because both are collaboration. Any suggestions? Um, maybe I'm reading it wrong. But one of them is. A collaboration between students and adults, and the others between the adults. Well, the it's written. This one is teachers, counselors, and advisors. This yeah, one's the one above is strong collaboration connection for for students with the adults. That's how I read it. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. No, I agree with that. They're two different. It's relationship between adult and adult, and relationship between adult and student. Okay. So you're okay to leave them both in? Yes, but you might be able then to get rid of create the next one down, create student relationships with at least oh, one yeah. then that Good becomes idea. redundant. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Can I put in a plug for with that strong collaboration connections with adults? Can we can we make a point of that at least one? um adult connection because we've highlighted over and over again how important that is that looks like that was just the heading for that group of things again but i i guess that's oh you're right you're absolutely right that's a heading ah okay 
So it's, but then we're missing something. Right. I don't know. Okay. Any suggestions on what that is? Oh, you know, I'm seeing on line 65 where it says promote respectful interactions with others who disagree. I think we moved that maybe from some We did because I think it got that moved. got us off track. So okay. that strong collaborations was the heading. And then I don't know where the promote respectful interactions with others who disagree or that came from. Promote respectful interactions with but I'm not sure Others? if that's a really uh, if that's a really low one. Okay. Um, ee, it's hard to tell what happened exactly. Well, that that's why I pulled it out of the spreadsheet oh, because the spreadsheet. I see. I see. Yeah, we did implement social emotional curriculum and promote student growth mindset, and if I remember correctly. There was a promote student growth mindset as an individual thing, and it might have gotten mixed up. So, do we have a something about? I think it uh, when you see the where I've merged the the middle school and high school together, it's in that one. I'll leave it here for now. Well, I think I think it was more we we embedded that we embedded that into implement social emotional curriculum. But I'm not sure how strong of uh, uh, I don't know if that was one of our low ones. And so then you can get rid of that promote student growth mindset because it's part of a social emotional curriculum okay. we cover that so if you okay. give me a minute i'm i'm looking at the version history here <clears throat> and i've got the one from march 16th right before we started our meeting so if there's something in the wrong place um okay. i can find out what that is okay if someone just gives me a line range as to as to where we're confused 60 to 68 Okay, so as it originally was before the meeting, implement social emotional curriculum was at the top and strength and connections between parents and schools was at the bottom. Um, and I'm not, the totals aren't in it at this point. Mm -hmm. So the, I think the quickest way to uniquely identify would be the last two digits on each line. I don't know if anyone else has it in front of them, uh, but going from 60 to 68 quickly here, the implement social emotional curriculum that ended with two and seven. Those were the last two scores. Does that make sense yeah. to anybody? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Foster collaboration between teachers, that was three and six. Three and um, six. Student relations with one adult was one and one. The growth mindset was four and two. Oh, gosh. Now he's going too fast. Why too fast? I can slow. <laughs> Do any of these sound like they're matching or are we totally off? I think yeah, that's we, where we're off, that last one you just read. Okay, so um, we had implement social emotional curriculum, foster collaboration, create student relationships with one adult, promote student growth mindset. Are those all in the right order? No, this one, the one, there's no student growth mindset. Instead, it says students remain aware of others' differences. Is that what you guys are seeing? Right, so if we, if is so, uh, if that one got taken out, <clears throat> does it say four and two next to others' differences? No, that's create. That's create re student relationships with at least one adult. Is oh, four boy. and two? And we have we have that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, with at least one adult was originally one and one. Yeah. And we've captured that up here. So the okay. next one was, so, uh, yeah. yeah. 
I guess if you want to know which are the lowest three scores, give me the last two numbers next to them, and then I can match them up with the original lines. Okay. The lowest ones were four and two. So that's promote student growth mindset. And one and one. That's create student relationships with at least one adult. And then seven and three. Uh, strength and connections between parents and schools. I like those three. So I'll just open it again. All right. We'll go with this. Let's move on to the middle school facility. And what came out of that is continuing recess after COVID and physically and programmatically separate middle school and high school. Going on to three, this one's about maintaining positive attitude about being successful in school. And we're looking about morning meeting sets the tone, a creative learning environment with differentiated instruction. And here's the, here's the mindset. So, so we can take mindset out of here because I've got it yeah. below. And celebrate student strengths and projects with families and communities. Students have a role in determining what success looks like. So that, in a sense, that's some student voice. Ensuring students find success through the curriculum. Explore ways to celebrate diverse skill sets. And involve students, oh, this is a decision making, and taking pride in learning. Motivate students to learn by engaging them in fun activities. Do we see any changes needed here? Okay. Moving on to student needs, uh, provide periodic movement and exercise throughout the day. This one was about a student advisory panel. And this one is about relationships between students, students, teachers before starting academics. And if you recall, that was the team building that happens uh, prior to the start of school or before the classes really start. Any changes there? Okay. This one is about positive school culture and climate maintained within the school. It's about teachers having positive attitudes, uh, culture of inclusion and work, um, smoother transitions between elementary, middle, and high school. These, oh, this is activities and team building. Older mentor, olders mentor younger students. This is, I'm finding this fascinating. The sixth grade challenge on Braintree Hill and the stations. And I, as I've merged the two together, I think that uh, uh, we'll be fine with that. A final event to celebrate student work, teaching internet safety, and students practice digital, digital citizenship. Any changes here? I think um, I, I hadn't heard the students practice digital citizenship before. I'm curious what that means. Like at this age in middle school, I feel like there's a mixture of which kids maybe have social media and which ones don't. Okay. Is, is it, I mean, it's, I agree, it's good to practice, but I'm, I'm wondering if it will bump up against a little bit of parental resistance of when a kid gets Facebook or Instagram or I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure every parent's different. Well, it also could be just about your uh, your tone and emails too. So it doesn't necessarily need to need to be social media. It could okay. be just how you're using email. 
Okay, thanks. That's it's taught from elementary level, David. We do it um, through library class, and it um, it's yeah. It, we haven't had any resistance from parents so far, or hasn't clashed with social media. Uh, Christine Gilbert would be a good person to ask. She teaches it at Brookfield. Okay. Um, do we have another section where we talk about use of technology? Because I thought that that was the teach internet safety and students practice di digital citizenship showed up under technology, not under uh, whatever. Yeah, what to ensure a positive school environment. Or are we lump? did you lump those categories together? I think I did. Okay. Yeah, uh, so it's really about maintaining a positive school culture, culture in the climate, especially this one. All right, let's see where that goes. Uh, number five, uh, should we continue to operate as we do now? And folks said it's a great way to organize, have a consistent adult to support the middle school students over multiple years. Uh, more individualized student coaching and personalized goal setting, and parents need more information from advisors. Any changes there or any questions? Okay. Under the curriculum, uh, STEM classes, special projects, student enjoyed. I don't know if this one's going to survive, but just, I, we heard from the students. Students really enjoy learning through race car and community service projects. Uh, so I don't know what the race car was, unless that's the Thunder Road driver that came in and spoke. No. Um, so Winton, that is integrated studies. So that's when um, I, I think that if we pull that, I mean, I think the teachers and administrators here know what integrated studies are, but um, it's really when they're teaching about design and the art teacher is involved and they're teaching about engineering and, and there's mathematics and science included um, and marketing. So there's different like brands on the side of their cars. Um, so it's, it's actually called the Oak Tag Rally, um, but it's an integrated studies unit where students are applying learning from all of their content areas, basically. Huh. I'm sorry, I have a cranky elderly bulldog in the background, so. <laughs> well, he's feeling left out. Probably, yep. yeah. <laughs> any, any other changes here? Oh, additions, deletions? Okay. What type of leadership is most effective? Current administrative focus is good. Uh, create more linkages between elementary and middle. And it sounds like that's coming along quite well with Lisa, with your work uh, visiting the elementary schools every, every week. And in fact, I think it says it right here. Yeah. Uh, seven, the Brookfield, Braintree, Randolph Elementary Schools, smooth transitions. Folks says schedule time for middle school teachers to get to know. Here's where that came up. It's been duplicated, so um, probably is more appropriate here. I'll take it out of the other place uh, at a later time. Uh, more collaboration with sixth graders throughout the prior year. Uh, shadow days with a friend during sixth grade year. This is Lisa's uh, venue here. Recreation programs have helped improve relationships. Uh, this one came up in a couple of ways. Non-athletes need additional activities like those experienced in sports. So that's the club activities. Uh, parents and teachers really want to be involved in deciding future middle school grade configurations. That, that was very strongly uh, identified in both the teacher forum and the parent forum. Uh, and Elementary teachers follow up with newly hired seventh grade core teachers in the fall. In other words, the transition happened in the spring. Some new teachers came in and they didn't have the same relationship building and deep understanding. Establish peer mentor transition program. Uh, this was about personal learning plans, student-led conferences and portfolio defenses. 
Does that make sense to the educators? What's said here? It says fully develop. And then challenge career day for female students. That was added. That didn't that didn't get a, a numeric score, but someone uh, last time said that was really important, so it's in. Any additions, deletions, or conversation that needs to happen here? Okay. Middle school transition to high school. Uh, folks said it's crucial to have a step up day after COVID. <clears throat> Excuse me, for the eighth graders going to the high school. Uh, heard a fair amount of teachers establish clear expectations for when work is due. And to do that, uh, I heard from students to do that a week in advance so that students can plan. And then seniors talk with eighth grade students about middle school portfolio defense and how it links with the senior project. Any thoughts here? I guess that's the last one. Okay. I, I, would, I just want to add about the teachers establishing clear expectations for when work is due is both about planning and accountability. Um, I, I mean, all of my experience with middle and high school with my own kids, like deadlines weren't hard deadlines. They were very soft and very mushy. Um, and I think a lot of parents would like to have a deadline be a deadline. And if a student doesn't meet the deadline, there actually needs to be a consequence. Otherwise, they don't learn that accountability. Just want to toss that in there. Okay. So how how should I, is it, is that just back background info or do you want me to, to put more language in there? Um, I think you could actually put both deadlines and accountability or something like that because it looks like it's for the what when the work is due but if no one's going to hold them accountable to the due date it doesn't actually matter right got it okay anything else all right let us now transition to the high school yeah let me blow this one up. So I did the same thing uh, from the uh, scoring spreadsheet. And so let's start uh, from the first. This is the knowledge skills uh, to be prepared for the next stage. We're talking about ability to actively listen, understand, and separate facts from fiction, both in person and through social media. Ability to effectively communicate in person by phone and electronically. Able to disagree respectfully and hear others' point of view. And remember, we talked about this in the middle school. So as I've merged these, I've taken into uh, account that those were similar in those respective forms. Empathy for others and be open and respectful of diversity, ethnicity, and perspective taking. Any thoughts as you're looking at the high school uh, spreadsheet? And we haven't we haven't done that analysis. I just took the low scores and pulled them in here. Uh, so there shouldn't be any jumbling because I didn't do any cutting cutting and pasting there. Any thoughts? Winton, I don't disagree with any of these. I, I like these priorities, I, but when I look at the Excel spreadsheet. I see under one person, like somebody voted one for, for all of them or four for all of them. So I'm a little confused about how the rating works. Yeah, I um, saw that too. It looks like it's an, it's an error on the, like some kind of formatting because there's a bunch of them um, on the first couple of categories. And it's like a lot of ones or a lot of fours for some people. So it, it seems like there's some, something was like hit that reset some people's. Well, I'm, I've got it up now. So let's take a look at this. So what well, I like column D. What D with this? D. So you're saying that all of these people didn't no. vote for one? Look, 
look I up and down. Like, look at like column D or E, and, and you scroll down, and you've got a one and a four, and then you got all fours. And it seems weird that somebody would have voted all fours. Yeah, and that's oh. like the case. Like mine is one, and then a bunch of twos. But like I didn't put everything as twos. Oh. Yeah, well. mine is the same as Kelsey's, and I definitely I might have made a mistake on one of them. Sometimes <laughs> the ranking got. A little intense, but not, I, not on the first one though. <laughs> I didn't do that. I know for sure. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true for mine too. I, I actually kept going back to make sure that I didn't score the same number more than once, and I've got all ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never use the same number twice as much as I could catch it yeah. either. Okay, I've uh, I've got the original numbers if you want them. Um, okay. For oh, hang on, uh, I've got to get Lisa's in there. So again, I'm just going back through the document history, and I can tell you what the actual numbers are for all those errors. Really? Yeah. So Google went Google went a little crazy, huh? So if uh, do you want to quickly correct it, Winton, or do you want me to go in and correct it myself just while we're talking? Uh, go ahead if you if you're uh, comfortable doing that. I can do that. Now there may there were a few missed when I did this. I'm trying to think when it was. I think I did it earlier today, uh, and I think some scores have come in since I did that, which could change some of this. So I guess we're mostly interested in the in the three that are the lowest score. So maybe Richard, if you can look at those first, that makes sense, and we'll continue our conversation, and you let us know when you're catching up here. Yeah, I just got to correct the columns and the scores will work themselves out. Okay. Winton, I don't see that uh, that on the next few questions. Like it seems just to be that top one, I think. Okay. Well, that is a little uncanny, isn't it? That should be automatically retabulating. Yeah, it is. So Lisa Floyd, this one just seems a little bit um, statistically improbable. Yours are just in numerical order. Actually, David rollers are mostly. I just want people to check that because I'm just entering what I see in the document history. <clears throat> so it looks to me like Please shout at me if it looks like I've made uh, got your scores wrong. It appears like the big three are still the big three. Well, there's no way I gave one to everything. That would be a lack of effort. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jeff. Hang on. Miss yours. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Richard, column D on on that first one also has a bunch of fours in it. Thank you. Okay, that should be it. Okay. 
So we still have 16, 44, and 40. Yeah. So we still have the right ones. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, do they look okay in the other categories? Yeah, I don't see any of that. All right. Well, let us move forward. Richard, if you want to go to the next one and make sure, that would be great. Uh, this is, whoops, that's not the one. This is the one. High school. All right. So, I don't know that empathy was in that one. Someone want to? Uh, you've 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 um, you've just merged that with um, the other category. And what's the low score up there? Um, so so you have. Um, 35, empathy for others. Oh, 32, be open and respectful of diversity, ethnicity, and perspective taking. Yeah. And 42, emotional intelligence. And it looks like what you did is you took what skills and knowledge, and it, the heading for one was communications, and the other was social emotional connections. And you just okay. put the top three of each category in there. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, I think that's right. Okay, so do we capture the six we need here? Can I put in a, a quick plug here for um, the critical thinking skills? <clears throat> At first, I was a little baffled as to how that scored so low when I was doing this, and then I realized that I don't think of that as a social emotional thing. Um, personally, I felt critical thinking is hugely important, but it was in the wrong category. I, I count that as a life skill, um, and I don't know if we have something that overlaps it in the life skills, but um, I think it's massively important. I just didn't categorize it as a social emotional thing. All right, but we're still on, excuse me, we're still on skills, tools for high school students to be prepared. Well, it could be, yeah. Where's the best place for this? Um, in my opinion, life skills, but I'm, I'm throwing that to the group. What, what, folks, what do you think? Yeah, I think that makes more sense. Okay. All right. Are we all set on is, the first is there one? Is not a curriculum section for the, for the high school? Because to me, critical thinking is part of your part of the curriculum piece. But I guess there isn't a curriculum. I think section. That is fine. It works for me under under life okay. skills. All right. Taking a look at the second one, we've got the newly merged critical thinking skills with perseverance, take risks, fail, and adapt, and uh, possess democratic foundational knowledge, which includes citizenship, following laws, voting, and understanding how politics and power shapes lives. Does that align with what the numbers tell us? I feel like perseverance is sort of the same thing as take risks, fail, and adapt. I don't know. What, I don't know what the next best score is, but those two sound awfully similar to me. Which ones, David? Perseverance seems similar. Yeah. Or perseverance seems similar to taking risks and failing and adapting. I got it. Folks, okay if I if I take that out. And I can't see if you're doing thumbs up. So if somebody can just tell me. Yes. Got it. Thank you. So, David, will you be my eyes? David Roller? Yes. Okay. All right, going on to three. Um, what should we do to ensure students meet graduation standards? Uh, innovation Center resources to complete projects and demonstrate learning strong advisory support for students to meet academic expectations and help them establish mentorships. That, that one sounded a little strange. Uh, guide students in the development of personal learning plans and make it matter, identify why schoolwork is important. 
I don't think that the innovation center was one of the more important ones. Okay. What do the numbers say? I think that was the highest scoring one. Yeah, I think that was the least important. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you, Wilder. Any other changes there? Okay. Let's go on to four. Uh, the community expectations for project based learning, community service, job shadowing, internships, and college exposure under senior project. Uh, provide early exposure throughout high school and connect with community partners. Uh, this one, consider moving to junior year and set up deliverable milestones at each year of high school. And again, I remember the, uh, the alumni, I think, Lisa, if you remember, uh, said that the senior year is so busy that the senior project is, is um, I don't know if they said nearly impossible, but they said they thought maybe it should be considered in the junior year. So um, consider different ways to deliver senior project. Visit colleges, encourage students to be educated and live in Vermont. Um, again, that was another alumni one uh, saying it makes more sense to look at less expensive college and try to keep youth in Vermont rather than everyone escaping. Uh, help students understand the explicit link between portfolio defense local history project and the junior research paper um, yeah, yeah, go ahead so the local history project hasn't happened for the last three years so i feel like maybe we should remove that got it okay well and in this category when you're giving us more than you're giving us all of the the low scores under senior project did you mean to do that i did because what i was trying to do is where senior project came up in two places i was trying to condense and merge and explore ways to demonstrate the value of senior project before completion talk more about it in grades 10 and 11. Winton, I don't know if this skews the data at all, but um, <clears throat> both times the Innovation Center has been mentioned, it hasn't, it scored high, as in it hasn't scored well. Um, I personally don't know enough about the Innovation Center to be able to make a, a credulous, a credible decision about it. I don't know if the rest of the team feels that way, so I don't know if the data about that particular thing is fair. Maybe the Innovation Center is more beneficial than we know about, but um, and maybe more other people know more about it than I do, but that was my feeling on it. I, I don't know enough about it to know whether it's helpful. Who would like to talk about that? I feel like I can. Um, so the Innovation Center is <clears throat> the place where um, we have a lot of STEM projects happening in a non-COVID year. Um, we have robotics happening in there. We have um, coding classes. So we have computers, a lab set up ready to host those things. Um, this year, classes have been going down by grade level. So for example, Emily Therian's social studies class at the 10th grade level was able to go down um, and create artifacts um, or projects representing an element of the industrial revolution. Um, so it allows students the ability to design. They, they learn how to use CAD. Um, they can create things on a laser cutter. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something, but it really has been <clears throat> beneficial for our students. Um, a couple of years ago, the last senior project year um, before COVID, we had um, students design coasters that they were able to design and then make, and they were mentor gifts that we were able to hand out. Um, so they did everything from design them through creating them um, and finishing them. I think that's the summary. If anyone else um, can think of something I missed, please feel free to chime in. So what are your thoughts? 
Should we include that in? Having heard that, I mean, that would have probably changed the way that I scored it personally. Okay. Should we say something about Innovation Center here? And if so, I've, I've started something here. Help me to finish it. Lisa, it, this is something that the um, that the classroom teachers can use, like they can use Ken's expertise to sort of do a little bit of team teaching around a, an idea. Yes. And, it, and is it, I mean, uh, Emily's teaching social studies, so it's STEM, but it's also social right. studies. Yeah. So it's more of an integrated. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's more of an integrated space. So for example, a couple years ago, Rebecca Castellano, the seventh grade English teacher had students, um, write books or write stories. And then they were able to design and use the laser cutter to make wooden, um, covers and they could bind their books. Um, so they were, you know, using those design skills and then getting to use the machinery to make to make something um, that makes their product a little more durable and professional looking. So teachers have been um, using Ken as a resource because, you know, without that resource there, I think I wouldn't know the first thing about how to use a laser cutter. Okay. I think I'm hearing enough about this that we'll include it back in, even if the numbers didn't show it. And that's the beauty of a design team that um, it's more than just a quantitative analysis. You've got to know something about um, a resource like this in order to be able to assess it. So I think that makes sense. Any other changes here to senior project? Okay. Let's go to project-based learning. Uh, Frequent contact with outside professionals, more student career exposure through job shadowing and internships. Partner with business leaders to integrate career exposure. Oh, so we within should, yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't we take that piece about the innovation center and put it down here with with project based learning? Because it's a good I idea. Mean, student could use that for their senior project, but really we're wanting to encourage this interdisciplinary and integrated right on the money and i agree okay. it's there yep uh, local opportunities include uh, water quality management job shadowing and engineering internships at gw plastics that might be a little bit granular but i think the the point here is made any thoughts about what you see here? Uh, that might, yeah, in terms of being granular, I think I would uh, at least add in other local manufacturers or other Vermont manufacturers because it's not just UV plastics. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Why don't we, why don't we say um, internships with area uh, or with Vermont manufacturers and leave it at that. Okay, going to five, uh, what should the high school do to ensure students are successfully uh, prepared to complete uh, this is about the tech center so link college focus and technical training build on foundational knowledge ensure students attend rtcc because they want to and integrate personal learning plan goals with the rtc programs any changes edits additions any advocacy points here? Uh, 
Okay. Uh, uh, my own personal focus here. I would just change the wording of, of link technical training with pathways to college. Okay. Now the, it's kind of the other way around. Oh, okay. I got it. Got it. Did, I don't remember what was this about ensure students attend RTCC because they want to. Generally, well, somebody that students that go there want to go there. They have to fill out an application. There's, you know, there's. If you yeah. didn't want to go, it's not like you could. You would be like forced to go. You have to fill out some paperwork to go. So I'm, I'm just curious why that's there, I, or is it more about having a real plan for why you're going there, not just because there's cute boys in the auto program? Well, I'll tell you where I'll tell you where I heard that. And it came from one of the forums that apparently a guidance counselor told a young person who grew up on a farm that he could only he would never do anything but farm. And so he got routed into the technical center because of the ag program. Um, so that's what came out of that. And I heard some other kinds of commentary, uh, not quite as specific. Yeah, I think it goes back to the idea that students go because they want to, because there's a pathway for them there. There's something that's meaningful to them for them to do there, and not because they feel like it's the only option left available to them. All right. So should we just delete that, or should we change what it said, how it's written? Yeah. I think we should change it to what Lisa just said. That All right. They're going because there's a pathway. They've thought through why they're going there and that way too hopefully a student you know isn't getting pigeonholed into going or um, not being aware of what's there sometimes what i find is some of the students don't even realize what's offered at the tech center and they think well i'm not the kind of kid that goes to the tech center when in reality there could be a really good match there in terms of pathway and and exposure yeah, and I would just say, you know, not to be naive to the kind of ugly history of uh, technical and vocational education that uh, kids were sent there because they were behavioral problems or because they were not college track, whatever that means. And so I think that was a really honest comment about don't forget the history and maybe it is still underlying uh, some of the, the students who get uh, encouraged to go to a tech center it's not because that's in their best interest it's because they've been targeted as yeah. not college prep so i wouldn't you know put that on the rug i think i think it may it still exists to some degree okay good thank you i wonder as well i don't know if it scored um uh, as important i know somewhere on here we talked about self-advocacy and i think that feeds into the idea of um, teaching students to advocate for themselves because I remember being that age and being told that if you go to college you're successful if you don't you're not um, so I think and and of course of staff training I would hope that that teacher was a outlier um, but yeah. those, those two things feed into that problem as well yeah uh, we we do have self-advocacy in here either in the middle of the high school you'll see it when I get to the merged the merged one uh, and finally, integrate personal learning plan. Oh, integrate oh, goals with the RTC programs. Are these redundant? Are these saying the same thing or not? I think in some ways they are, because if you are ensuring that students map out their pathway and they select one that makes sense for them and they're setting their goal, I wonder if we can merge the two. Um, by saying ensure that students attend RTCC because it supports their pathway and then maybe like a semicolon integrate personal learning plan goals with RTCC um, programs I don't love the end of it but I'm thinking about it okay all right with that change are we okay here all right 
entry into the world of work. I'll expose middle school and high school students to multiple career pathways. Build transferable skills into each student's personal learning plans. And again, these don't exactly mirror what you see uh, in the score sheet. Uh, I'm, I just try to do some edits and put that into language that seems to flow a little bit better, and you'll see why later. There was a problem with this part of the score sheet, Winton, and that three of the parts of it were repeated. So I think some people scored one part highly and some people another. So I don't know. Maybe the math will work out the same, uh, but maybe it won't. And that's just worth yeah. mentioning. Okay, so you're working on it? Uh, it's not something I can fix, unfortunately, because there's uh, there's repeated categories. So we've ranked it 1 to 11 when there are, in fact, only eight categories. Yeah, because I think in the forums, I think I deleted uh, one of the questions when I found that people weren't getting through all eight questions. So I think I, I cut it down to seven. Maybe that was the issue. I'm not sure. So those might be the lowest scores, but they might not be. They may have been skewed due to people spreading their, uh, spreading their low numbers in a different way across the columns. Okay. What, to, what do you propose we do about that? I propose we look at the list without the uh, repeats and just as a group, just make sure we feel that those are the, the three most important. Okay. I don't know what line is this uh, one? From 89 through 99. So there are yeah. three of those that are doubles. Yeah. So um, if you deleted 94, 95, 96, the, the words in there, you would delete the repeats. So I'm not advocating for deleting any numbers. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. But if you deleted those, that would that would remove the fog of those repeats, and then we could focus on what is the list, and do we still think those are the top three? All right. Do you want to try to do that? You want me to delete them? Yeah. Can you do it? Yeah. Go ahead. And I'll stay on. And if anyone feels like I've I've got it wrong or accidentally deleted the wrong one, please shout at me. Okay. But I believe those are the three that need to go. So do we have some other low scoring priorities that have emerged? It looks like exposure to, ooh, I lost it, exposure to adults in particular career fields is a lower score. Okay. Uh, anything else? Is it career fairs and connect with alumni resource? I, I missed part of the career what? Is that? Yeah. Correct career fairs and connect with alumni resources. Okay. Thank you. Any anything else? I mean, the first one is the lowest one by far, I would say. I would just okay. know that one is definitely a, a big focus. Okay. So it looks like we've got four good ones here. Do the numbers show anything else?
I think it's hard to tell. Um, I mean, I think I think if we all look at those and decide we're happy with them, if anyone's really surprised by it, then maybe not. But that that's probably the best compromise because unless we all sit here and score it all again, we're never going to find out yeah. the original numbers. Okay. All right. Let's go with that then. Let's move on to advanced placement college courses, college dual enrollment, early college, and vast. And we heard promote earlier in high school, uh, need more academic rigor to get students prepared after graduation. Did the spreadsheet show us anything else? I don't know why I only had two there. I'm not even seeing it on here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Well, oh, there's college fairs. Hmm. Thoughts here? I wonder if the other higher ones that help deal with academic challenges and advisory support and relationship building, if that ended up in, maybe in student needs or oh maybe i don't remember honestly but <laughs> it did did we address that already tonight because if we did that's okay okay move on What should the high school do to ensure students maintain a positive attitude about being successful in high school? Students need, need to know what they're learning will apply later in life, help each student address academic and social challenges, and advisory support and relationship building. Folks comfortable with those three? They're nodding their heads yes. Say that again, David. They're nodding their heads yes. Oh, okay, got it. All right. Thank you. Um, I I have just one. The one thing though, uh, it doesn't. Well, I guess it means. Ah, eh, forget it. I'm good. Okay, going to seven. What should the high school do to ensure a strong connection with at least one adult, adult in the community? Uh, ensure executive functioning and personal learning plan development is integrated within the curriculum and through educator professional development. Uh, support through um, student services, social workers, and the advisor. Any thoughts about seven? Okay, and the last one. Uh, what should the high school do to have multiple avenues for student voice? Uh, conduct periodic surveys to gauge interest and access to organized and student needs driven activities to uh, provide debate, student council, student congress and robotics clubs and understand the clubs provide identity and empowerment the students and helps them work through difficult school and family struggles. Any changes, additions, or deletions here? Not, not a number, but I noticed in the Excel file, there's a section for personal, personal learning plan. Did that get moved? I don't see it showing up in the Word file anywhere, but I saw it rated in yeah. the file. It's right here. Okay. And number seven, and it, it it was in a couple of places. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So we good on we good on this. Okay. So here's what I did. Let me blow this up a little bit more. 
what I did, and I haven't finished it. I started because I didn't want to get too deep into this if folks uh, didn't think I was going in the right direction. What I did is I, I don't remember if I used the high school one for the foundation or the element or the middle school one. Um, but I started off, see the questions vary. So both middle school and high school had, this is the same first question. What I'm attempting to do here is to prevent duplications and to begin to merge into uh, some theme areas that will help us shape the strategic plan. So I'm just gonna take you through this. You're not gonna see this verbatim in the, in the spreadsheets, but I think the essence is here. And that's where I'm really gonna need your help now to kind of move through this. So starting with the knowledge, skills, and tools students need to be prepared for the next stages of their lives. Um, why don't you just, uh, can you all see this either on your own or on my screen? Just give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Everybody seems yes. Good. All right. Uh, just review those, and then I'll, I'll come back on in a couple of minutes, and we'll have a, uh, have a conversation about it. This is in the emerging themes, the 322 emerging themes. Winton, is the point of this to then use it to help create the survey or is there a yes. different purpose for, okay. It's two, two purposes, one to do the survey and the other and, and to authentically do the survey because this language came from the feedback forums and eventually some of these uh, may end up in the strategic plan. So what we're doing is we're condensing and refining as we're moving through this. So great question, thank you. I'm also going to say that I'm giving uh, some sharing some gratitude and giving credit to David White, who took a cut at this uh, two meetings ago. And David, you're going to see your voice in this as well in some of these. Uh, Winton, one thing I realized after the fact, I don't know if it was the nature of the questions, but I guess it depends on what this is being used for. But I noticed athletics did not come up very much. Oh, yes. You, you said something about that before. Actually, it only came up in the, uh, the issue around non-athletic activities. And so let's incorporate that, because I remember you mentioning that two meetings ago. Uh, I don't know if this is the place for it. Um, not standards. Well, let's just for a placeholder, put it here. Got it. Winton, just for clarity here, and I apologize if this has already been answered, but we have these two priority documents from the middle school and the high school, and then yeah. we have the emerging plan themes. Are these three separate documents for three separate purposes, or is this document we're reviewing now, is that a conglomeration of the original two? The latter. It's, it's a merging and conglomeration of middle and high school. We'll make the middle and high school one available uh, and in the plan itself, there's going to be two areas of focus. There's going to be a really high level of focus for the school board, talking about kind of management of the, of the system 
And then there's going to be more of an administrative uh, approach, which is in the implementation of these issues. So there's an administrative goal focus and there's a school board goal focus. The board manages the system, the administrators and teachers manage the day-to-day -day operations. So think about it, board does policy, administrators do the, the operational approach. Okay, so with, with that in mind, I guess, um, I, I would hope that all the work we've done in putting together those priority documents from the quantitative analysis and from discussions was really reflected if this is the one outcome document, if, and it sounds like it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm just, like I, like I said in the last meeting, I do notice every now and then there does seem to be quite a stark disparity in some places between the voice of our priorities document and the voice of this document. Okay. So, well, that's, that's what our conversation is about now. So, all right, let's, let's dig into this first one. And again, this is, this is really the mission statement of the school district. Uh, the knowledge, skills, and tools students need to be prepared for the next stages of their lives. And again, this one, this tends to be maybe a little bit more of a policy issue than it is a operational approach. So what I'm thinking is, couldn't we have just, because the question is the same for both of these. Right. Or couldn't, what, did you just copy and paste the answers for number one from those, from the high school and middle school? Yes. Priorities list and then tried to combine. Yes. Maybe that made sense. Yep. It's just hard to look at the, the three different documents and know, um, and and process all that information at the same time. So, okay. I guess I wonder if this is a good use of our time, Winton. I wonder if it might be smarter. And I'm I I don't want to tell you how to do your job or anything. I'm just wondering if to save time here, it might be better for us to build this from the ground up from the priorities documents rather than all of us trying to analyze these three documents. All right. Uh, Suggestions yeah. on best ways to do that. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm wondering, uh, Winton, if it's the same process, whether that's from you or whether we need to be involved. But I'm wondering if we, um, like I say, with the, the uh, document that we're looking at here, the Emerging Strategic Plan Themes, as we've done part of the analysis tonight, um, I feel like it's almost worth building from the ground up, building from those two documents, putting them in, checking for duplicates and going from there. Because uh, what we've got in front of us right here looks like a very piecemeal document, partially based on uh, what David started, partially based on our work last week and partially based on our work this week. So there's a lot of out of date information, I think, in that document. Um, that's my opinion. So if anyone. A lot of what was, say to your last sentence again, a lot of outdated, out. Well, because this, this, if this is the final document, when this was written, we hadn't yet done our meeting together as, as a group here on that high school part. So a lot okay. of, work, I, I feel like we're just going to do the same work again that we've just done. So I feel like it needs one person to take the two priorities documents, smush them into one emergent policies document with the up-to-date information, and then we can talk about it. Because otherwise, I don't know how everyone else feels, I feel like we're just doing the same thing again over again. I got it. Okay. Well, the reason I have done it partially is I wanted to make sure I was on the right track and to make sure that the team is comfortable with where we are right now. So let me let me repeat what what my my logic is here and see if that's sound reasoning before I I do what uh, what you said what Richard has said um, I took the two spreadsheets I I uh, used one as a foundation document I brought in the other one uh, so that under this part here I had both spreadsheets on knowledge skills and tools I then, I then began merging the statements into one kind of soundbite. Actually, no, I haven't finished it because here's the middle school one here. No, wait a minute. No, that's physically, emotionally, and intellectually safe. No, I finished this. 
So this one is an amalgamation of both the middle school and high school skills, knowledge, and tools that students need. And I did it as bulleted items. And I think that's where I've stopped. So let me po pose the question again. Do you trust me to do this? Do you want to do this in the next meeting in mass? Or do you want me just to finish this, send it out to you, and then we come back on the 29th and finalize this? Well, I think what Richard is saying is that we edited those documents that you took the information from. So yeah. do you so tonight while we were together, like if we I'm just thinking even for this one, like if I just copy and pasted, there's not there's not there's not that many either. I don't I right. think. So I wonder, you know, like this is from. You know, right? Yes. Let's do a litmus test right now, and then we'll put this one away. Uh, open up, uh, let's say half the team open up elementary. Why don't we have David, David, Ann, Kelsey, and Gus open up the high school one, and Wilder, Richard, Haley, uh, Lisa, and Kayla open up the elementary one, and I'm going to post this here under emerging themes, and let's just see if um, all the stuff is there. Sorry, Winston, I'm not sure what you're asking us to do here. Well, I'm asking for half the team to be elementary specialists right now, and the other half of the team to be the high school specialist. And I didn't necessarily mean put it on this, oh, we're all working on the same document, aren't we? Okay. So what I'm advocating for, Winston, is that we have a phenomenal amount of synthesis to do here, but we've already done it. And yeah. I'm thinking that, our, again, the middle and the high school priorities documents, those two documents separately, but together, represent everything that we have opined together so far. So what, yeah. what I'm advocating for is those two documents, yeah. those are the ones we now merge into the emerging themes. and the other emerging themes I'm suggesting we put to the side. That's that that's where my head is given all the synthesis that we've done, but if I'm not if I'm not interpreting this right, I'm open I, to being corrected. I, I I agree with you. I just want to uh, have the the people, the design team members who I asked to do high school open the spreadsheet for high school. And those that I asked to do elementary open the spreadsheet for elementary. And I'm going to read you some of these statements and see if they uh, resonate across the middle school and high school spreadsheets. So what, once you have that open, I'm going to read you one and just tell me if, if it connects. And that way I know that I'm on the right track. And then we'll end the meeting. I'll do that work. And on the 29th, We'll, we'll come together and, and finalize this, uh, this theme process. Do so folks understand what I'm asking now? So we're not going, we're not. Uh, I, I misspoke. It's not, it's we're not the, 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 the forum priorities. I thought no. we we're doing the forum priorities are what you are. merged into this final document. Here, I got it on the screen. Those people that I asked to do high school priorities, just open this so you can see yours. You do the high school ones. Those that I asked to do the elementary, open it. Uh, I'm in the wrong one. I got too many files open right now. Where's the elementary? Well, you, you have it. So the elementary folks open the elementary priorities. The high school ones open the high school priorities. I'm in the emerging strategic plan themes, and I'm going to read you a statement and tell me if it meets muster in both the elementary and the high school. We'll finish this and then we'll end the meeting. Is that, am I making myself better understandable now? 
more understandable. So. All right, here's the first one. Ability to actively listen, understand, and separate facts from fiction, both in person and through social media. Is that in either the high school or the elementary? High school. High school. Ability to effectively communicate in person by phone and electronically. High school. All right. Able to disagree respectfully and hear others' point of view. High school. All right. Show empathy for others. High school. I think both. Yeah. Okay. Be open and respectful of diversity, ethnicity, and perspective taking. High school. Acquire life skills necessary to manage money, housing, and transportation. And again, it may not be verbatim. I think that's the one that was like miscounted at the very beginning. And that's what I think we were kind of saying is that like there were some errors that are probably on here now. All right. Did that, was that either middle school or high school? That was in the middle school, I believe. Okay. Who, who's our spokesperson for middle school? Well, I'm one of them, but I thought we dumped it. Okay. Did we? Yeah, we, you did. That was the one that was given all those ones, but nobody actually gave it a one. It was just shifted. Got it. Okay. This was my concern. It feels like right now we're doing work that we have already done. Yeah. And what I'm advocating, I'm advocating that this document that we've got, this out of date one, that we get rid of it and we start again. Because yep. we've, we've done this work. We just need to combine the two documents into one coherent document this one is confusing and out of date okay and, and I, I will do that but i just want to make sure that let, let me go down to the middle school part in the middle school guide students to acquire transferable skills necessary for the ever-changing job market that wasn't a specific one but does that cross middle school or high school in some way I do think that's a fair summary of some of what we captured under job skills. Okay. Um, but we don't, we haven't used that language um, in other places that I recall. Okay. And the last one I'm going to test you with tonight, teach students about different careers, the pathways to achieve those careers and have students explore what might be of interest to them. I feel like that's another way of referencing personal learning plans and exploration of career pathways, um, but it's said differently again. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll close with that. Do you, want, do you want the emerging themes to be verbatim from what people said, or do you want some wordsmithing? And that's really what I'm I'm trying to solicit from you right now. Uh, what What are your thoughts? And then we'll wrap it up tonight. I, I wonder if perhaps without having two exclusive categories, one high school, one middle school, we have a third, which is both. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at here. A lot of things that are like an umbrella category that right. are both, and some are you know more appropriate to middle school, and some are clearly more appropriate to high school. So there would be that would be like three categories, and we haven't really considered that so far. But I think that's what I heard Richard saying as well. Okay. What What's your pleasure? Do you want them to be some specific high school, some specific middle school, and some uh, combined? No, I want one document, and in any case where something is just specific to the middle school or the high school it can be noted but i i would hate to have three different documents right okay yeah i agree i don't wasn't talking about three different documents i just meant some acknowledgement that there are some things that are very appropriate for both and we don't have to state them twice okay got it because the edu their education is is continuous and you know and builds they there should be very little that you know other than transitiony stuff to between places that is that specific, I would think. Okay. So what I'm gonna come back to you on the 29th, remember that's when our, our newly scheduled meeting is, 
I'm going to come back with uh, the synthesis of high school and middle school. And from that, we're going to extract uh, survey questions and continue to refine uh, the evolution of the strategic plan itself. Does that make sense? Okay. And we're at 8.01, so it's time to wrap up. So thank you very much for all of your great work tonight. Uh, this is tough stuff to do face-to-face. -to -face. It's even tougher to do this electronically. So thank you a great deal. I'll see you at 6.30 on the 29th. And I'm just trying to think. I updated the timeline, so you'll see uh, some changes there. And I'll make sure that uh, I edit in the, the 29th for, that, uh, for the next meeting. Enjoy this lovely uh, week of spring. It may change soon. Have a good night.